Hi everyone, we're here at the Metals Investor Forum doing backstage interviews. I have Andrew Pollard, who is CEO of BlackRock Silver. Andrew, thanks for being here. Yeah, it's great to be here in Toronto. Exactly. Exciting times. Gold made an all-time high, a closing price uh, just yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and um, fantastic news for the, uh, for the precious metals market. Uh, lots happening. You know, we're, it, it, may, it may not be the bottom, but uh, in terms of, you know, uh, a new bull perhaps starting for, uh, for precious metals. We'll have to see where that goes, but uh, that isn't stopping um, BlackRock. You're evolving um, tremendously. And why don't we just dig into that a little bit? Right. Well, I mean, if this isn't the bottom, I mean, I don't see how things can get much worse in terms Agreed. of just where sentiment's at. And as an investor in companies, I mean, the most explosive moves are generally right at the bottom here because, I mean, that's where you get the huge percentage gain. So, you know, I, I think it's one of those situations where a lot of um, people have gotten euphoric previously and then, right. you know, being cut down by Fed policy or being cut down by macro issues. But I think right now the writing's on the wall that things are starting to crack out there. I mean, just look at the exponential debt that's, you know, acquired. It's, so, you know, we're, we're getting closer towards the Fed cuts. And I think that's what's really driven the, 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 um, the sentiment in the silver space because it's not a structural issue right. whatsoever. I mean, as you know, you know, there's more silver being consumed than is actually being produced. Exactly. So from a structural point of view, that's really sound. But what's been missing is that sentiment and that euphoria. And silver is such a small industry. I mean, really, there's maybe 20 actual silver companies out there. And it's, it's more hated than uranium was just a couple of years ago, and it's significantly smaller than uranium. But as investors, you know, have just been able to see, you know, what happens when just sentiment turns in a small industry like uranium, things go parabolic. And silver, I mean, the moves will be even more explosive when that day comes. And, you know, silver is only 2350 right now. Sure, gold's at its all-time high. But, you know, as we get closer to that rate cut, silver's going to keep pace with gold and then slingshot forward. And that's where the real fun begins. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. At BlackRock, I mean, yeah, we're extremely well positioned at this point. We're sitting on the highest grade, large undeveloped project in the industry uh, by quite a bit. 100 million ounces, just silver and gold in you know the best possible setup you can have, which is private land in Nevada. And we've got a clear path to both grow it, but also start looking at the developmental lens as well. So, I mean, we've got background scoping studies underway, starting to look at what a conceptual um, uh, operation this will be, both in terms of, you know, mine design and planning, um, but also looking at, you know, uh, CapEx with, with mill and cash costs and all that fun stuff, because at these sorts of grades and with what we've got already, I mean, this is going to be a, a standard operation. We actually just had a um, a new analyst initiate coverage on us, a guy by the name of Ron Stewart. Mm -hmm. And Ron's a well-known analyst, but before that, he was senior vice president of exploration for Kinross, wow. uh, an up-and-comer. Um, right. But he did a, his own conceptual mine cash flow model and forecast, and he thinks this operation, just as it is today, would be pre producing at all in sustaining costs at 13 bucks. Amazing. So lowest quartile yeah. for sure, yeah. and safe haven ounces at that. Fantastic. So you hit a big milestone last year. Um, can you tell us what that was and, and yeah. what it, where it's brought us? Well, I mean, we only started drilling uh, Tonopah West um, about three and a half years ago. In fact, it was uh, right around March, April of 2020 that we first acquired our option on the project. And fast forward three years worth of drilling later, we're now sitting on 100 million ounces of uh, silver and gold, and it's at a half kilogram per ton, block diluted grade as well. So um, there's nothing else like this in the industry, and we've got clear potential. I mean, anyone, I've got a slide in my deck, which shows, you know, a pretty straightforward path to, to realize that by the time this is pumping out gold and silver, uh, it'll be north of 200, probably 250 is where it'll end up. Um, and that's just straightforward mine expansion, vein expansion style drilling. We've, we did the hard yards early on in our drilling where you're figuring out where these blind and buried veins are hidden, but now it's predictive and, you know, a little bit of drilling, like, um, you know, we, we 2.5 X star resource in October from our maiden. Uh, so we went from about 40 million ounces to that hundred million ounce threshold, which is a big milestone. But beyond that, you saw our discovery costs plummet. Um, I think for a maiden resource, they were up uh, around 50 or 60 cents. And then in our last resource, they were down in the 30s. That's, um, that's going to keep falling yeah. with more drilling because, you know, we know where everything is now. It's just time and money to, exactly. to get the drilling done. But also, um, you know, that puts us in sort of, you know, with our 40 million resource originally, people thought 
it's too small. It's not going to sure. be. It's not going to be a standalone. With this one, yeah, we're at standalone status already. Where we're at right now, both in terms of size and grade, was exactly where Silvercrest was with Las Chispas mm. uh, when they put out their Made in PEA. They had about 100 million ounces at roughly the same grade profile that we right. have. At that time. I mean, that was a good market. Those ounces were commanding something like 4 to $6 wow. an ounce in the ground. Today, in this market, at what I think is the bottom, we're commanding $0.40. Cents. That's the One leverage. Tenth. Yeah, exactly. One that's tenth. that's the leverage call option yeah. um, action you get in owning an equity in an emerging market um, uh, versus you know something, the, the volatility on the way down, which everyone's experienced in just the last couple of years. Hard to imagine some producers larger producers not noticing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the nice thing about silver is the fact it's just so small. I mean, I've got a slide in our deck on, on blackrocksilver.com where um, we've got every advanced exploration and development story in the silver space uh, listed on a graph. Um, we separate out by grade and then by enterprise value ounce in the ground. And um, there's only 15 or 16 projects globally. Right. Um, and most of them are under 100 grams per ton. A silver equivalent. And then when you go by grade, I mean, there's really only three high grade stories. And then, I mean, as you know, uh, you know, Mexico is the number one producer of silver, but that's plummeting quickly. They're off 25 percent right. in just the last couple of years. And they're also just I mean, it's a hostile government. Yeah. I mean, the notion of banning open pit mining would be catastrophic for the industry itself. But private land in Nevada is looking pretty good. I mean, Peru's the second largest exactly. producer and, you know, you've got blockades almost every right. other week. Uh, Their production's way off. And yeah, exactly. Well. And it's just tough to move projects along. In Nevada, I mean, we're on private land. So one of the nice things about our deposit, you know, some might, might see an inferred resource or a PEA and say that, OK, well, that's early stage. It's not early stage because, you know, what would take three to six years for most other companies to permit, if they can get a permit, right. would take us maybe three to six months mm -hmm. just because there's no federal involvement in it. It's just right. the state and county. Exactly. Now, you do have two other projects. Yeah. Um, Silver Cloud is one of them. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how that's evolved and, and how you're looking to advance that? Yeah, well, listen, Silver Cloud was a bit of a blessing for, for us. I mean, that's what got BlackRock started originally. I, I came into BlackRock originally because... Uh, as an investor, because they acquired an option on this 45 square kilometer land package sandwiched in between two of Nevada's, some of the world's highest grade gold mines, the Midas deposit, which Pierre Lasson mm -hmm. made his name on, and um, Hollister right next door, which uh, a young up and comer named Robert Friedland mm -hmm. operated in the 80s. And there was a high grade discovery made after that. Um, uh, so I invested in BlackRock because of that. It's grassroots, it's generative. Um, I just, you know, the old team sort of dropped the ball in my right. opinion. So I came in and it was because of Silver Cloud that I was able to build the team we have that generated Tonopa, which wow. became our flagship. And Silver Cloud's highly perspective were the big donut hole in the middle of Hecla Mining's claim block up there because they now own Hollister and they own Midas and we're both systems point directly there. It's got, right. the, we think Silver Cloud's the keys to the covenant. Mm. Uh, we've, you know, haven't done much up there simply because Tonopa quickly became our sure. flagship with, you know, we hit 30, 30 meters of a kilogram <laughs> per ton in drill hole one. So <laughs> unfortunately, Silver Cloud took the second, yeah. second stage, but at the same time, we love the prospectivity. In fact, we, we made a discovery there last year, uh, still the highest grade drill hole we've ever drilled as an entire company. It was 70 grams gold and 600 grams silver. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those markets where drilling um, isn't really getting rewarded. And, you know, we're keeping uh, Silver Cloud in there because we think it makes us more alluring as a takeout target. Certainly, if I'm Hecla, I'm looking at that. Right. Um, but also... Um, you know, there's always potential when the when the junior exploration market comes back that we might be able to create some value for investors with that in some form or another. Makes sense. Uh, so the third one is Tonopah North. Yeah. Um, that's in, in a, another sort of very interesting metal. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, that's well, what's listen, happening there. you know, we keep making discoveries at like the exact wrong time because <laughs> at Tonopah West, when we hit our first drill hole, it was the same week that gold had hit its all time high uh, and silver hit 30 bucks in July 2020. Um, at Tonopah North, Tonopah North is really just the extension of um, Tonopah West. So the way our Tonopah district holdings are shaping up is I've got the highest grade undeveloped large silver project in the world at depth and at surface just a few kilometers away we've got something that looks like a, 
absolutely massive tonnage um, lithium deposited surface in the cover rock. Uh, we made this lithium discovery by just happenstance, I guess, um, because we were chasing our geologic concept up towards the north. Uh, and we didn't hit any gold or silver, but every single drill hole that's been drilled into Tonopah North is hitting huge, um, you know, good zones of, of, of nice uh, grade lithium clay mineralization. And it turns out um, that whole area, those federal claims that we've got, um, fit like right in like a piece of, like a Tetris piece with a company right next door called American Lithium, mm -hmm. which has the second or third largest lithium resource in the world. Wow. It was, it was at, uh, PDAC last year that they put out a um, PEA on their project. It's a $3 billion project wow. that we've got the extension of uh, just based on our drilling. And we've got 7.2 square kilometers drilled out. Uh, you know, we think we might have a third to half the tonnage that they do. Wow. And, you know, it, we've got that vended out on an earn-in agreement with an actual lithium company. They spent a million dollars last wow. year of their money drilling core holes. And it's looking good. Um, they've got, you know, they've got to spend a lot more money to, to actually earn in. Um, but it's just a shame that lithium sold off about 82% sure. since, <laughs> since we made that discovery. But at right. the same time, it's, it's interesting, certainly from a green metals sure. um, perspective, this story is quickly emerging. I mean, silver is obviously going to be a key driver Absolutely. in solar and EVs and just the whole electrification narrative. But so is lithium. And, you know, when we've got this entire piece of land down there, with with just a, a a very fascinating set of commodities. I mean, you, I don't get to choose what I drill right. into, but it's pretty interesting. Um, so if lithium comes back, that'll be icing on the cake. But as it stands right now, I mean, even with Silver Cloud out of the picture, with Tonopah North out of mm -hmm. the picture, just with Tonopah West, we're undervalued versus my other high-grade peers in the silver space, despite being higher grade, better metallurgy, and a clear permitting path. So I think this is a, we've got a lot of torque and we should see some good relative strength here. And most importantly, we're cashed up because right. that seems to be the only thing the market's really valuing right. these days. And intrinsic yeah. values out the window <laughs> until it isn't. Right. Um, uh, but right now, you know, we just did a five, nearly $6 million bought deal financing just a few weeks ago. So we're cashed up through the end of the year and are going to be advancing Tone of the West with met, met studies. We think we can see some incremental um, growth uh, in terms of just getting the recoveries up. Uh, we've got some engineering studies underway. We're, we're sorting um, hydraulic studies right now to try and um, get a handle on. Well, I, we think we've got the we we've got water on our property, and we think that's going to be sufficient to use wow. in our operation. So, just big things to de-risk the project. And four years, March of 2020, when we closed this deal with uh, to acquire our option on Tonopah, our final payment to own 100% of Tonopah West. Uh, uh, is going to be made this month. Excellent. Uh, so we'll actually, we'll clear up title on that too. We'll actually be owners in, instead of renters, which right. from a takeout perspective, oh, yeah. that cleans things up and um, just unmuddies the waters. Excellent. Well, thanks so much. This is a tremendous overview of, uh, of BlackRock and uh, lots of things, uh, exciting news to come as, uh, as I can tell for the next, uh, the next several quarters, people need to pay attention. If silver goes, it's going to be a hell of a time. And even if it doesn't, we're blessed with a project that doesn't need higher prices. This Excellent. is going to be a low cost. Producer. Absolutely. Thanks again, Andrew. Thank Appreciate you. It.